Last week I was in DC and I was in the back of an Uber with two of my friends, Science with Liz and Science with Annie, and we were talking about the whole Tylenol autism issue. And the Uber driver was kind of listening to what we were saying. He turned to us and he said, well, what about men? Can men take Tylenol? Is it safe? We were just about to get out of the car and I blurted something out like, there's no evidence that taking Tylenol for men, for women, for anyone, will cause autism. Kinda looked at me a little bit confused and I could tell that the message didn't really land. I do think there was a little bit of a language barrier and Liz and Annie and I were talking after the fact that we weren't entirely sure if he was asking if it's safe for adult men to take Tylenol and whether it could cause autism in adult men or if he was asking as a soon to be father who is trying to conceive a baby with a partner. All of that aside though, it got me thinking about how we're messaging around this topic. Probably heard me and others say, there's no evidence of a causal link between Tylenol and autism. Wouldn't it be so much cleaner and clearer if we said Tylenol definitely does not cause autism? The reason we hesitate to use that language. We need a certain type of study, an experimental study, actually not just one study, several studies to really be able to confidently make any sort of a causal claim, either positive or negative. But we can't do those types of experimental studies because it is well understood that high fevers during pregnancy can be harmful. It would be unethical to design a study where we're withholding treatment from pregnant women. We do have a lot of studies on this topic. The largest study to date, which had over 2.5 million children in Sweden, about 186 thousand of whom were exposed to acetaminophen in utero. This was a massive study. It's our best evidence to date, found no association. But there have been a handful of other observational studies that have shown some sort of positive association, some like the overwhelming evidence and the best quality evidence tells us that there's no causal association. We have not really been able to tease out very clearly the acetaminophen and autism versus why the mother during pregnancy was reaching for the acetaminophen, we're lying fever or some other chronic condition, the reason why she was reaching for the Tylenol that could perhaps increase the likelihood of autism. No, I don't feel comfortable saying with 100% certainty that there is no one out there who has some mix of genetics and other environmental factors who during pregnancy, if they did take Tylenol, could it potentially interact with all of those things that increase likelihood of autism? I'm not 100% comfortable saying that. I am comfortable saying there is no causal evidence telling us that that is the case. If, and it is a very big if, there is any association, it is going to impact a very small percentage of the population. And we know it would be a very small effect because we have a really good understanding that genetics is largely at play when it comes to likelihood of autism. I hope explains a little bit more about our language choice that people can get comfortable with that sort of nuance. I know it's not as simple and sexy as saying this does or this does not cause an outcome, but the reality is a lot more nuanced.